In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Proverbs. And one of the things that I think you really have to understand to really get the full grasp, uh, to, to grasp the entire concept of this proverb, because just the words itself are good if you knew nothing about the author and didn't even know who wrote it. But knowing that Solomon wrote this proverb, I think gives it extra weight. And here's why. King Solomon was one of the wealthiest men on earth in his day. When you talk about the 1%, there would be people in the 1% that didn't even come close to Solomon's wealth. I mean, this guy was at the top tier. He was the Bill Gates of his day when you're talking about wealth. And yet, he was a man that ferociously and often talked about the virtue of hard work. Now, he was a king, and what he said pretty much went. It would not have been all that difficult, especially considering that his father David had won lots of spoils of war to kind of give him a good head start on this, it would not have been hard for King Solomon to have lived in the lap of luxury and not really had to work all that much. And yet every indication that we're giving from the scripture is that he liked to work, sometimes even manual labor, things like gardening and, and farming and working with his orchards. This was a man that understood the value of work, despite being very, very, very rich. I mean, super duper rich. And I recently got into a discussion. I, actually, I say that it really wasn't that recently. It's been a while now. But I got into a discussion with somebody. And I remember them saying to me, and this person was, was somebody on the left. They said, it's just a terrible thing that hunger still exists in the world. And I know that what he's talking about, and, and I said as much when we were having this discussion, was abject hunger, somebody that goes consistently several days on end without a meal and has no ability to get one. And there are several countries in this world, unfortunately, where that does still happen. Extreme poverty is still a problem, and I'm not saying that we ignore that. But sometimes I think we go a little bit overboard on that and throw the baby out with the bathwater. Hunger is not in and of itself a bad thing. We as human beings feel hunger because it urges us to work. And so when you're talking about a hunger that drives us to go out and to seek and to serve our fellow man so that we may gain something in exchange for our hard work, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. God made us with hunger for a reason. He gave our, our bodies the ability to do that. And we're going to see some of the wisdom in that coming from Solomon. And this comes from Proverbs chapter 16, verses 26. A worker's appetite works for him, for his hunger urges him on. So one thing that I want you to really zero in about that verse is that it's saying that the appetite, in other words, the hunger that a worker feels, it's an advantage, not a disadvantage. And what's the advantage there? Because a man that is hungry works harder. Not somebody that's a skeleton and can barely lift anything, but it's saying that somebody who has a desire for something, somebody that has a desire to feed himself and to provide for his family, that appetite is good because it spurs him on. It gives him the motivation that he needs to work hard. And there's something that I also need to address too. Sometimes I think even those within the church, sometimes even Christians that are devout, have an unhealthy view of work. They almost view that once we get to heaven, that there's going to be no work. Now, I do believe that heaven is a place of rest, and the Bible does back up that idea. I'm not saying that that's not an aspect of it as well. But I also don't get this idea where there's going to be no work once we get to heaven. I want you to remember this. God could have made human beings to not have hunger. 
to not need to work. And yet, here we are. Yet we do have that hunger. We do have the need to provide ourselves nourishment. Even in the Garden of Eden, before the original sin took place, there was still fruit all around. And presumably, they had to go out and get it. Now, they didn't have to work real hard for it. They didn't have to till the soil like they did after the fall of man. But they did have to go out and acquire food. And Adam had a job even before the fall of man took place. He had to keep and dress the garden, and he had to care for and name the animals. And so this idea that paradise is going to be free from work, I don't get that indication from the Bible. Every indication that we're given is that God's perfect world and his perfect creation includes work as a part of the process. And we need to remember that, that God made us in this way and that we don't need to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Our appetites, our hunger, our desire to do good, our desire to serve our fellow man, a lot of that comes with our original sort of base desire to need to provide for ourselves. And that can spur us on to good work because God made human beings to work. And ultimately, through that, he teaches us an important lesson through almost a parable. That he sends us this lesson that everybody can understand. Everybody can understand working because you're hungry and you want something. And because of that, isn't what he's really saying here that we need to work for him, that we need to do God's good work, that we are his workmanship created to do good works? And if that's the case, well, what's our appetite for that? What's our appetite for wanting to do God's work? Our appetite should be for him. Jesus said countless times that I am the bread, I am the water that you will drink and never thirst again. You see, we need to hunger after God. We need to have an appetite to be with God and to be in his good favor. And doing so will spur us on to do his work. That is work worth doing. Stay the course, friends. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.